Hello there amazing people and nerds and geeks, we are going to install Arts Linux Ooh, and we are going to use the Arts install script that comes with the official Arts ISO because I never done it before, I never used the script before, I used Easy Arts scripts and all, uh, what is it called, set install and all of those other ways of installing Arts and of course the official Arts way of doing it following the instructions so I kind of want to try this out but it says we should, we should just basically type Arts install and it should run the script okay so let's see here what it's asking for testing connectivity there it goes to the arts linux servers and then it basically i think it's testing the different lands so five is denmark oh no 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 that's the keyboard uh, it says uh, you can choose a layout that isn't in this list but uh whose name you know okay also you can enter question mark or help to search for okay to search for more languages or skip to use us layout select one of the above keyboard languages by number or full name so i i have a danish keyboard that will be number five good old number five a full handful like you can say it so i just typed in five and i'm pressing enter I kind of wish that it would clear the, the top, uh, I don't, don't know if you can see my mouse, but I wish it would clear the top part up here because it just, it's for cleaning this and stuff like that. You can skip this step by leaving the option blank. Select, select one of the above regions to download packets from. And I want to do Denmark again, so I'll do 15. Select one or more hard drive to use to configure Lee blank, blank to skip this config. So if I choose plug device uh, number three, plug device uh, dev SATA, I think that's the whole, you know, the whole disk. So, you know, my disk is, or my hard drive is at forward slash DEV, DEV forward slash SDA. That's what, where my drive is. So I guess that if you select that one, you will select the whole drive. So let me try that. Select one or more hard drives. I, I'll just only select that one. So I select that one. Can I then just... What if I click three again? Oh. So if I click enter again. The wording and, and the way that they have laid this out is not user friendliness or... Let me rephrase this. This looks like it's done by an engineer for an engineer. They're not really thinking about that average people are going to use that. They, I would word this differently. I, I would make it more clear what to do. The the UI element of this or the user experience element of this script is something that it makes sense for them. It don't make sense for me. So before I go into it later on uh, or, or go further, I have a little antidote. I took a course where I did um, documentation, you know, schematics for people. And my teacher said, because I did it like they're doing here, I understand it with the base knowledge, knowledge of what we have to do. This was a component that needs to be CNC milled. But with basic understanding of how a CNC machine works and stuff like that, you could understand my schematics. But the teacher said to me, always make the schematics and the instructions so the stupidest person in the shop can figure it out. And that has always stuck with me. That we have to remember when we do these kind of things, we may understand it, but we need to make it so the low hanging fruit also understand it, so the most non knowledgeable people understand it. That's how we do, do, uh, do that's how we do good guidance. That's how we do good, uh, you know, instructions. Everyone has to understand. And I don't care if you say, oh well, this is meant for power users. That don't matter. You should still make the instructions so clear that if you're pissed drunk. You know, been out with the boys and you're getting a fucking shit ton of beer or wine or whiskey in your belly. You can still follow these instructions and that's not what I'm seeing from now. Okay, what is it saying here? Select one or more hard drive to use and configure. I just did that. So again, it, it, it's, 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 it, it's putting text together in a way that makes it a little bit confusing to be honest and, and kind of don't make sense. Seal wipe all selected drives and use best uh, effort default partition layout. One, select what what to do with each individual disk. Follow partition use. So I've selected the first drive three. So it should again, if this was like like the bare, bare minimum they should do is remove this this line down here. Select one or more hard drives to use because we just did that. We don't need that anymore. That should just go away, and you can do that. So do we just wipe uh, wipe all drives uh, or select what to do with each individual drive? For the sake of just doing it, I would just do zero, just let the, the installer do what they deem to be the best practices. 
Uh, and again here, now we ha- it still have the text up there. It should remove that text, but we are done with it. Again, it can be done in Python. Select which file your main partition should be by number or name. I just want one. And here's another thing. I know in the computing world, zero is a number and the same in math. But for me, are mortals, you know, us normal, stupid people that eat cake, just don't have zero as a number. Just do one, two, three. For. Again, this is uh, looks a lot like a script done by an engineer for an, on, on other engineers. You all know zero is a number, but just call one uh, the first number, okay? So I will do number one. Again, make it so understandable that stupid Danish people like me that don't speak natively English can understand it while they're pissed drunk on beer or meat. And, and again here, more text to confuse it. Enter disk encryption password. Leave, leave blank for no encryption. I don't want an encryption. Would you like to use swap on CRAM? No. Again, this should just remove all the text we've already answered to, just to clear it out. Desire hostname for the installation. Uh, it will just be test. Enter root password. Leave blank to disable roots and create user account. Again, these steps here, like when you get to these steps, they are explained well. It's just conf- not confusing. It's it don't look neat. It, it it's all crammed together. You know, there's no spacing or anything like that. At least have like a a spa- a line between these things, so you can see that you're going on to the next step or call them step A, B, C. There's so many ways you can show the person using the script that you are now doing something else. Because as humans, we tend to read from top to bottom. So all of this here is still in your viewpoint, you know, in, in peripheral view, so it can be distracting and stuff like that. If there's not clear distinctions between the lines or if they're not removed and stuff like that. But anyway, I just want to leave this blank because I want a super user. Create a required super user with pseudo privileges. So I will call it uh, Kent, password for Kent, it will just be 123456. And one more time, 123456. Enter a username to create an additional user uh, name. I will leave that blank. And now again, you see, oh, a, a bunch of text just come up. Now I have to find where, where I stopped answered, answered and the new text begin. And because it's so clamped together, it's like, okay, did I st- was this up here? Where, where, where did I, I answer a question the last time? And it's here, enter a username. So enter a pre program profile name if you want to install one again it, it, the wording seems a little bit weird to me zero again let's just do one two three four four one two three four five six don't put zero in there for you know desktop provide a selection of desktops and why okay so we have desktop minimum server exot install a minimum system as well as exot and graphical drivers the above list is a sex sets not sex <laughs> it's a set of pre-com program profile. They might make it easy to install things like desktop environment. Leave blank and hit enter to skip this step to continue. So I like the the four bottom lines here. Again, there should be a space between my last answer ans question and, and before they, they start to do this one here. So I don't have to like, you know, see where the fuck, what the fuck is the start of this section here? Or clear all of this up here so it's not there anymore. So again, what they want you to do here, select your install target if you want to go the open source way. What is the target of your distribution? Do you want to have a desktop, a minimum install? Do you want a server on XORG? I'm just going with good old zero. I want a desktop. And again here, clear the stuff that I don't need or, or give a space or something like that. Answer a... No, I have to... So here's the thing. <laughs> this is what we do. I go down to read the last line, and then I go up to see when the selection starts. Select your desired desktop environment, and then I go back up, and I have to think, oh, is it, uh, oh, no, 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 this is too much if I go all the way up here. Okay, I have to go up to here. I kind of hope you guys can see what I'm saying here. So now we have to select your desired desktop environment. I want, what do I want? I am a really undecided. Let's try Bocce. It's been a long time since I used Bocce on Arts. So now again, I have to go down and read the last line. Select a graphical driver leave blank to install an open source driver. And then I have to go back up to see when the list starts. And it's AMD, Intel, NVIDIA, VMware, VirtualBox, open source. Let's just do five. 
because I'm in a virtual machine. And again, it's just read the last line and then go up and find when this list starts. Choose an audio server D plank to use pipe wire. I will just use pipe wire. This is it. This is it. It's what it should be doing each after each question. It should be doing what it's doing right now. Clear the screen so you don't get confused and leave it like this, or at least have some space between the lines. Choose which kernel to use D plank for the Linux kernel. So I'll just D planks because I don't want the Harden or LTS or Zen kernel. And why didn't they just again clear the fucking screen and stuff like that? Okay, so here. Only packs such a space, based elf, Linux, Linux uh, firmware, uh, EFI, boot manager, and additional profile packages are installed. If you desire a web browser to Firefox or Chrome, Chromium, sorry, you may specify it in the following prompt. I do want Firefox. Let's just keep that and then press enter, I guess. And again, it's cramming things together. Now I have to read the last line to figure out what they want me to do and then go back up in the wall of text to figure out where the list is. So select one network interface to configure leave plank to skip. So I go up and I find a zero. Okay, it's, it's the fourth line up. Copy ISO network co configuration to installation. Use network man manager necessary to configure internet graphical gnome. Yeah, so, okay, so I want number one. And again, it should just clear the screen and only have or have the last line here, or at least have two empty spaces or something like that to divide it up to some extent. Enter a valid time zone, uh, for example, Europe, Stockholm. Let's just take Stockholm because it's in the, I don't want to live in Denmark. Is that, I think that's spelled right. Enter, and again, space. Would you like to use automatic time sync? Yes, space between the lines so it's easy to read. You know what, what are they saying here? So now we have to read from the top again. Would you like to use automatic? Again, we are getting text from the pre-config, from the pre-answered question. It's con it's really bad user experience design. Hardware time and other post configuration steps might be required in order. Okay, so this is here where you can, it basically gives us, wait. Let me try again. Hardware time and other pre-configuration steps might be required in order for NTP to work. For more information, please check the Arch Wiki. It is really, really hard if you don't have a mobile phone, tablet, and this is your only computer. You don't have two screens and you don't have, like, you know, access to the internet in another way. This is your chosen configuration file. Bootloader is crop. Desktop environment is botchy. Driver on false, graphic card driver, host name, kernels. Yeah, I, I, I can see what they're doing here. System language, network manager, we have that. NCP2, pack, extra packages. I think they're just making a temporary file that it's reading off the configuration of the desktop from. Swap, we don't have a swap partition. System encoding, system language is English United States. Where is the Danish keyboard? Oh, well. Uh, press in to continue. Let's do that. So now it's formatting my SAT or my SDA, creating a new partition. Part it ended with a bad exit code. Arrow partition 2 on SDA have been written, but we have been unable to inform the kernel of the change, probably because it, they are in use. Uh, are, we, are, we, are we going into genderizing the kernel now? <laughs> As a result, the open changes will remain in use. You should reboot now before making further changes. Oh, fuck. So if I do reboot, it actually found my resolution now, which is really, really strange. So I, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, I will try and, and speed through the installer again. It's now formatting our drive. This is where we had a, a, a problem the last time, creating a petition, but it, it seems to be uh, running. Okay, so now it's installing the packages. Okay, so here, will you like to chroot into your newly created installation and perform installation configuration? I kind of like this. Let's say I, I uh, being the lazy, stupid Danish guy I am, I may have forgot that, oh my god, I really need VLC. So, yeah, that, let's go in there. So I should be in in my uh, installed uh, partition right now. So I could basically just do Pac-Man and then VLC. And now I'm getting VLC. You can also go in and configure the Pac-Man configuration file and all kind of things. You get my idea here. I think this should be it. I think I should, what happens if I do exit? 
So it just tells me that the installation completed without any errors, you, you may now reboot. So let's just reboot and boot into the existing partition. We are here, we are in Bocce. I, I can't really fault it that much. It seems to be working. It does what it, it needs to do. Just like with Arch, they are overcomplicating things way more than necessary. But it works. It, it looks like they have not really thought about the user experience using the script. It, it don't seem like, like they have thought about how can we make, why do we have extensions installed when we're in Bocce? Anyway, like, like I said, they, they have not thought about how can we make this uh, as pleasant experience for the end user. How can we make it as understandable as possible for the end user? How can we make it as easy, readable, convenient, call it what the fuck you will for the end user? And it don't take much, like I said, clear the screen after each question or make spaces between the questions so you don't have to figure out when the, the new question starts and uh, and the old question big ended. You know, so, so it's clearly laid out that, okay, I just answered this here, double space or double uh, blank lines or one blank line. Now the new section is there. It don't take much to improve the experience of running it so much better. That said, I will say it wor it's working, yes. But it's by far the worst Arch Linux install script I have used. I have used easier uh, uh, easy Arch install script quite a lot. It's way better, it's way faster, it's way more easily understandable. I have used, what is it, Archfy or, or, you know, a lot of those that you download from GitHub. They sort of taking them as a, as a, as a guideline. Because, like I said, it's overcomplicated. It, the user experience is really bad, in my humble opinion. And there are so many scripts out there that just do a better job. A way better job. I, I hate to say that I hate to kick uh, kiss Esnick's ass because he gets too big-headed. I think he's a fucking god now. But his script is actually better than the Arch Linux official install script. The biggest improvement I would give the Arch Linux install script or the Arch install script. Give it a better user experience. Make it more convenient to use. Think about the user experience. Hope this was a little bit interesting. See you all later. Bye bye.